the otters here. Raven and a woodpecker. It's so quiet out here right now. I'm going to set up a blind for otters. I found a uh, pond that has uh, one otter in it. That's all I've seen. So hopefully I can get some stills and some film of this this otter feeding and eating in this pond. I think what's happened with this pond is the water's dropped and there's a gap now between the ice and the water. And I think there's a lot of room for that otter to, to move around in there. But he's got a couple of, I wouldn't call them air holes, but entry, exit holes where he can crawl up on the ice. There's three of them. And the difficulty for me is which of the three am I going to set up for? Can I set up for two of them or can I set up for just one of them? It's uh, it's going to be tough and I think I'm going to be shooting down a bit which is not what I want to do but I don't think I have a choice because I really don't want to walk out on the ice because if I walk out on the ice the noise is going to alarm that otter and uh, if I do make too much noise I'm not going to shoot today I'm going to come back another day and uh, and try it so worst case scenario this is just going to be a setup for the uh, for the uh, for the blind and then first thing tomorrow morning I'm going to come in so let's let's continue. There's, there's no otter on the pond right now, so I'm going to set up the blind. If the otter was there, I would wait until he goes back in. So I'm not on the ice, I'm actually on like an island. And uh, I'm going to set up the blind in an area, I have to be far enough away that I'm not going to spook him, but yet close enough where I can get some decent images. And I don't think I'm going to shoot today. There's a lot of, lot of weather between me and the otter. so and it's. They're big snowflakes, they're not small snowflakes, so there's gonna be a lot of autofocus stuff um, between me and my subject, so I'm gonna let that go. I'm, obviously, I would shoot a higher depth of field, probably F11, or higher even if I can. I've got lots of, lots of white here, so there'd be no problems with shutter speed. So anyway, so I, I'm gonna set up my blind, and, uh, and then tomorrow I'll come in and see if I can get this otter.
it's a cold day. We've, uh, we've got uh, about minus 20, minus 21 out there today Celsius. It's very cold. And I don't know if I'm going to see the otter today, but it's, it's pretty nice conditions. I'm just, I'm, so I'm just waiting. I've been here for about 20 minutes. Nothing yet. Keep watching my live view. I've got it on live view so I can see this hole. And then when I look out here, I can see the other two holes. I can't really see the holes. What I'm actually looking at is is tracks close to the hole. So hopefully he's gonna come clear the hole, come out in the snow. This the spot that I'm focused on here seems to have the most use. It's actually got some uh, it's not open water, it's frozen water, but it's it looks like there's a lot of activity around it. I had to use my binoculars to see that. So that's what I set up my blind on. And I've had to set my camera really high because I have to see over a little mound. If I got if I got closer to the mound where I wouldn't have to set it so high, then I'd be too close to the hole, the first hole. So I have it jacked up. I cut down some of the little bushes and stuff down just so I could see through them. They're all dead anyway, so I'm sure they'll all grow, grow back again next year. Sometimes it's nice to get more of a, with all this clean snow around it, it'd be nice to get a shot with, with the animal, you know, with some of this beautiful textures and stuff, the, the hills and, or the mounds and the snow would be nice. But there's a beaver den over here, and there's a beaver den over here, or a lodge, I should say. They both have breathing holes. They can see, you can see where they've been. The warm air has been coming up through it. There's, there's, you can tell they're being used because there's these, these holes in the snow where the warm airs come through and, and melted the snow. Now, one of them could be the otter's den. And I'm sure the big one is, is for the, for the beavers. The big one looks a little newer as far as the mound looks. I've seen it in the summertime and it looks it looks very high and it looks fresh. This one looks like it hasn't been maintained so I'm, I'm thinking maybe the otter might be in there and it's not too far away so I have to be really quiet. When I come walking in, I, I come in, I don't stomp my feet. I come in. He's just printing himself right now. He's just slipped into the hole. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. All right, guys. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see that? There's a few images I took. You can see I got a little bit of blinkies going on. That's okay. I want to expose as far to the right as I can. If I if I don't, I might lose some detail in the blacks. Oh, there he is. He's looking at us there. He, can, he, can, he knows something's going on in this blind. He keeps turning his head and looking this way, but he's still comfortable. He's just laying there. He's actually got his eyes closed. There he is printing himself. You can see that. I'll pull you in a little closer.
otters are one of the toughest subjects I've had to photograph because they're so aware of what's going on. There's, they feel very uh, susceptible to predators when they come out on the ice like this. So they don't want to spend too much time. It's starting to snow. So they don't want to spend a lot of time, even though I have followed otter tracks for kilometers just on the land, through the trees, through the bush, and nowhere near any water. This is in the winter time. And this is really the best time to photograph them. I mean, to photograph an otter on the snow is just a spectacular image, I think, if you can get a good one. It's really starting to snow out now. It's getting darker. So I don't know if, uh, if we'll have any luck again today. What a spectacular thing to see.